Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video I'm going to show you a quick tip that's going to help you speed up the process of selecting and reselecting your audio pieces inside your session and then you can go back and you can do things like deal with the trimming, you can deal with the fade in, fade out, a whole range of different things. This is just one of those little tips that's going to speed up your productivity tenfold. So let's take a look at how we can use that now. So what we need to do is open up a single panel inside Reaper so we can access this function. So if we come up to view and we come down and we want screen sets and layouts, or we could do control or command and E to open that up with the default shortcut. So once you open that up, we get this dialog box. Now, we've looked at things like layouts in the past. We've looked at things like windows and so on. But we're going to take a look at selection sets. Now, as this name would suggest, this allows you to create a group of selected items and then assign them to their own name, which you can then come back and reselect. So let's just say, for example, we wanted to take this first portion of the audio, which may be something along the lines of our verse or chorus. So all we need to do to select that group of items is just right click and drag over them. That will now select all those items. When they're selected, we can do lots of different things. We can adjust volume levels and so on. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this to a selection set. So I'm going to click on the number one and we're going to click on save. That gives us the option then to give this a name. For this example, we'll call this verse and click OK. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to right click and drag over the second block of text click on number two and click on save and we'll call this chorus. So we've now basically got two blocks that we've saved as selection sets. And to call any of those back up, I just simply need to double click or click on load. So for example, if I want to load back in the verse, which is the first block, I just simply come over and double click. That's now been selected. And the same if I want to jump back to the chorus, I can double click and go back to that. So you've got a very quick and easy way of grouping those together and saving that group and relationship between them. Now we can also assign keyboard shortcuts to this. So if I wanted to assign a specific shortcut, I can simply select the item that I want and then click on edit shortcuts. And you can see that we've got a whole range of selection sets already assigned in there. We can then go through, click on the one we want and click to create its own custom keyboard shortcuts or whatever you'd want, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, whatever you think is going to be relevant for you. I won't worry about that for now, we just click on close, but you can assign that keyboard shortcut. Now, once we've got those selected, we can do a lot of different things. We can come back in and we can adjust the volume level. So while I've got the verse selected, you can see if I come over and adjust the volume, all of those items' volumes now are being adjusted accordingly by whatever amount we set. I can do the same thing when it comes to the fade in and fade out, the beginning or the end of that particular block of audio. So I can just grab the top left or the top right hand corner and you can see that now adjusts the fade in. And while we have that selected, I can do things like change the type of fade that we have. So I've got any of these, making sure I've got this little fade symbol, right click and I can choose a different kind of fade. And you see that now applies to all of those elements that are part of that selection set. And again, I can do exactly the same at the end of the audio if I want to. I can come in and I can adjust the fade out exactly the same as I would on the fade in on an individual piece. So we can do things along those lines. We can also come in and we can trim the audio. So you can see we can easily trim the audio or extend it so it'll start to loop all very quick and easy. And if I want to do the same thing now on the next set, I can just double click on the next set. And then I can go through and do the same thing on this. I can adjust the volume, for example, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty cool. The other thing, if we just clear these for now, clear that one and we'll clear that one. They don't need to be all in the same section of the sort of audio. We can easily come through and say, well, I want this piece. Hold the command key down or the control key and I can select additional blocks of audio anywhere I want in my entire timeline. And then I can save that out. So we could just come in, click on there, and we click on save, and we'll call this random, for example, and click OK. And now I can go to any of those particular blocks that are selected as a part of that group, and I can make adjustments, and you'll see all of those will be adjusted accordingly. 
Now they're all adjusted based upon where their initial starting point is. So you can see this one, for example, the green block, the volume level overall is lower than the first one. That's because it's keeping its position based upon where we started before we made the selection. So that's something to bear in mind. It's not going to sort of reset everything so they're exactly the same. So I was going to take it from its initial starting point. And we can create as many of these as we want to. And like I say, we can easily come in and we can adjust the actual size of the audio and anything that's associated as part of that group will be adjusted size wise. All very quick and easy. So this is a great way if you're building up a song and you're having these different building blocks and you want to sort of select them later on, maybe copy and duplicate them and you know build a song up from small sample blocks. This is a great way of doing something along those lines. And that's all there is to it. It's another one of those really great little time-saving features built into Reaper that not many people know about or utilize. Well, as always, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. For any comments, questions or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, happy mixing.